Hi, John here. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in today. Well, look at this. This is an oldie, a 447. As you can see, single carburetor, but kind of nice. No points in this one. It has electronic ignition, uh, capacitor discharge ignition, of course. Uh, I'm going to take this apart and find out what kind of condition it's in. So let's find out. So oh, kind of interesting. It uses the same gaskets as with the twin carburetors. This is the, of course, the back side or the engine side. Two inlets here and with an adapter on here for the carburetor. So old school, but pretty neat way to do it. And two uh, 10 mil bolts hold on the this part of the uh the cdi unit so this if we turn it this way it's exactly the same unit that goes on a 503 just mounted the other way on this one so would we'll just be a standard testing for that one no problem there so let's get the sheet metal off of this one somebody has wisely siliconed uh, over top of these screws uh, so they don't fall out. We'll deal with that after. We'll just carry on. We'll take these all out. I've already taken the, this only has one fastener in the top. So let's lift it off and see what's maybe been living in there. Who knows? Oh, very nice. Actually, the the uh, sheet metal here is in very good condition. What do we see in here? Oh, a little, a little bit of uh, mud dauber activity in here. So a little bit of uh, an issue there. But uh, so far, so good. So spark plugs, uh, BR80S. Of course the ones with the uh the screw on tops but again this has the other spark plug cap that grips it on those threads um running wise the plugs don't look like they've been in there forever this one has a visually wider gap than that one but uh, looks like it was burning not too bad so now let's uh they left the exhaust manifold bolts just sitting in here and uh, let's see so you notice uh, if you're familiar with 503 no uh this is all one piece so let me see how much of a battle it is going to be to get it off so it stretched stretched out a bit there so i've broken the seal on the gaskets here and then it's going to be the same on the exhaust side And I was hoping I was going to get it off this way. But apparently not. Well, I don't want to bend it, so I'm just going to wait until I take the fan housing off, and then I'll get the sheet metal off that way. Recoil cup and the pulley comes right off. And well, it, it looks like it's surprisingly in good condition. And the same with the belt. I wonder if this has even been changed. See, so, you know, I'll have a look after and see if I can find a date code on it. And I, this is what I usually do with them. I just flip them up this way out of the way. Then I can work down here, get the uh, magneto flywheel off. That's next. So here's the part of the tool for removing the flywheel. Uh, it, it bolts on with its own bolts. These are the ones that came out. We always have to be careful on the length that we use when we put them in, because if they're too long, they'll dig into the stator 
and that's an expensive part to have to replace or damage it just because you didn't inject the length of a bolt. So a 31 millimeter socket, the same as on a 503. This all pretty much looks identical. Uh, there we go. Got a nice long bar here, makes it way easier to get it off. And I'll switch over to a ratchet and I'll take that off now. Well, now that I've removed the nut, I need to remove the washer. And I don't know if you've seen me do this before, but I take a very thin screwdriver and just push it in and I take it off like so. Only if you can see the way this is, it actually was on backwards. See how it's curved up? This is the high point. It actually should have been installed this way so that when I take it off, it should have been like that. So what do I know about that? What's the big difference? Well, when it's in backwards, if it's going to do any damage to anything, it should damage the nut because we can, we can exchange the nut or even flip the nut over and use the good side. But if it gets chewed up in here, that's an expensive uh, job because if it's real bad, we may have to replace the flywheel. I would put it in the lathe and probably machine it. But regardless of all that, when you put these washers in, the way it goes up, that goes towards the nut. Okay. Now, before I screw the tool in, this turns inside here. And I don't want this to, to dig up the end of it. So there's this little protection cap that fits in there. But, of course, it tries to fall off as soon as you let it go. So how do I know it may keep it there? I just daub a little bit of grease on, white grease, any kind of grease. doesn't matter. And then look at that. Just like magic, that sticks right on there, no problem. And then I usually put a little daub in the middle for where it's going this part is going to push on it so now we'll screw this in as far as it'll go i don't want to just put it in by a few threads because why not use them all it's stronger okay so there we go we're in all the way snug that up by the fingers get a 24 mil socket there we go get my nice long extension uh, or um l handle and then it's going to make a real good crack when it undoes. They normally do. So if you're not ready for it, it'll definitely wake you up. <coughs> Whoops. Well, it wasn't that much concussion that moved the camera. I hit the camera with my hand. <laughs> but anyway, you get the idea. So it makes a big noise. It's nothing wrong at all. It's on a taper and it fits on there really tight. We don't have any uh, that I can see pieces of debris inside of here so we'll just put that aside and i'll take my tool off it after let's recover this guy whoop he stuck pretty good in the grease didn't it clean the grease off of there clean the grease from my tool and then this all goes back in its kit in its place where it's ready for next time now Wow, that stator looks really nice and clean. I wonder if somebody maybe has replaced that. It's a newer style. Interesting. Okay, well, I'm going to reset this, and we'll take that off next. And, of course, there's a special tool for everything. So to make it easier to get down into these socket heads here, this is the nice way to do it. You can crack it free and then do that one. And uh, yeah, I wonder if somebody, uh, if this originally came, I should check the serial number on it and see if it originally came with this ignition or it's been a conversion. Um, it's a provision eight engine block. So it's, it's not one of the very earliest ones. It's probably one of the, the very latest ones that they had. Um, now wiring wise, this all looks good. No animal chomps on it. It doesn't look rotten or deteriorated. And like I said before, this is the newer style one. Uh, the old ones had fabric tape wrapped around 
Uh, these are the charge coils for uh, the ignition system, and these are the charge coils for charging the battery for that part of it. Nope. Okay, visually looks good. I'll be putting it on the machine and testing it after. A uh, little bit of um, goo around the seal, but nothing terrible. Um, nope, looks pretty good so far still. So we have one ignition pickup on this side. Um, I'll find it in a second if it's adjustable one. And here's a position over here where the other one would go if it had a dual ignition. Uh, so that's, let's take it off and have a look and see. Yeah, this is the newer style uh, because the older ones, uh, this slot here allows for uh, some adjustment for gap and timing. The uh, very old ones just had like a hole in there and it just bolted on. And pretty much where it ended up is where it was. You couldn't really change too much. Oh, okay. All right. Well, this is an issue. So this is all rotten here. So I can just look at this like gum. Um, so there's the, there's the wire right there and here's the insulation for it right here. It's all rotted away. So, um, that's not too good for that. All right, moving along. It's almost time to get this fan housing off. Matter of fact, yes, let's take the fan housing off right now. run these out with the gun because it's faster. Collect all my screws, put them down there in my pail, and there we go. We got it off. All right, we'll examine the fan, uh, the bearing specifically after. But for right now, we'll just put this aside. So I expect now that, well, look at that. Just like magic. Now I can get this off. And again, there's no, it's, it's pretty clean and nice inside. Perhaps there wasn't a lot of hours on this engine. Of course, there's just no log, no history for it. So who knows? We'll have to find out as we go and make a estimate of what we think it is. So before I get into taking the solar heads off, I want to mark the, so I end up with the matching solar head to the matching cylinder and I'll also be marking with the uh, electric engraver after the piston so that it all matches where it came from. So I use these little letter punches. They're not very big. And they find the spot where it's thicker up in the head area. And give it some little tappy tappies. There's my M for mag. And I'll do the same down here. And I got my M right there, so I know that they match. And of course, we'll come around, make sure you get the other one that has the P on it. And I will go in the same position right behind where I'm tapping this in. It's it's not unsupported like here. There's a there's a supported piece behind it. And we'll get a little one down here. And yeah, I could mark it with a marker, sure, but I'm going to properly clean and wash all this and the marker will come off, so uh, no point in doing that. Um, this is the little, they call it a damper, it fits in here and it just stops the sheet metal from rattling. So uh, it actually even is actually stretchy and squishy, so it's sometimes on old engine these things are hard as rock. So in the bucket it goes. So I started on that, I, I cracked these free with a ratchet so that I kind of get an idea of how tight they actually were. And uh, reasonably uh, even actually. 
Okay, so now that I went through that part, now I'll just go back to the little electric gun. And of course, this one came out with a stud as well. And oh, isn't that interesting? So somebody has put some anti C's down in these threads here. Apparently, it worked quite well. Uh, however, when this stud goes into the crankcase, uh, it needs to be torqued so that this shouldn't happen. This this should undo. See, I, this is not strip or like it's not hard to undo. I can undo it with my fingers. So, um, whoops, pick that one up. Anyway, not really a fan of that, but at least it's not all rotted out. Now, head gasket wise, uh, it doesn't uh, doesn't look like. Well, they may have been not tightened down all the way, or maybe it didn't have enough a lot of running on it since it's been done. It's pretty actually clean inside. Uh, this one's starting to form some grooves in it that match um, these sealing grooves that are in the cylinder head, and the other one. Uh, not so much. So maybe it was uh, tightened unevenly. Not sure. But um, anyway, we'll carry on. Here's a look inside the uh, PTO cylinder. Lots of shiny on top of the piston and a little bit of carbon forming in this one. So uh, I don't think this engine has seen many hours since it was apart last. Well, so much for today. It's pretty much over. So we'll be covering this little 447 up, and tomorrow is another day. Thanks for watching.